Hey guys, it's Zhang and today I thought it would be fun to challenge myself to eat only pumpkin things for the entire day. I went to the store the other day and got a lot of new fall pumpkin-y things. So instead of just eating these things as is, I'm gonna amp everything up with more pumpkin, more flavor, and see what we come up with. If you guys like these videos, be sure to give it a thumbs up so it can actually be watched by you all. And don't forget to subscribe. We'll go ahead and get started. As soon as I wake up, which was probably like 30 minutes ago, I have to have coffee, which I need to have some now. So we're gonna make, I know this is super basic, but a pumpkin maple spice latte. So let's go ahead and get started. I got this can of pumpkin puree and it was actually from last year because I haven't been able to find any pumpkin puree at places. So this will have to do, good thing it doesn't expire yet. So this pumpkin puree is pretty good. It's nice and creamy. The one that I got from Trader Joe's actually, it was like super dense and just compact. It didn't mix well. So even though I was able to find one can from there, I just didn't want to use it because I don't like it. So of course you have pumpkin pie spice. If you don't have pumpkin pie spice, you can always use cinnamon, cloves, nutmeg, ginger, a combination of that inside of your drink, but it's just easier just to get the pumpkin pie spice since they're everywhere right now. And then some maple syrup. This one has cinnamon and vanilla infused. And I'm just gonna add maybe like two teaspoons. I don't like my coffee too, too sweet. And then I'm gonna add my milk. I know this is so counterintuitive, but I like using a combo of cow milk and oat milk because it makes a really creamy drink. So I'm gonna add some cow's milk. This gives it the creamy mouthfeel. And I just love how oat milk tastes. It's like kind of nutty. That should be good. And then we're gonna head on over to our coffee machine. We're gonna do a double shot. Look at that beautiful crema, that layer of like, I don't know, espresso cream. I'm not really sure what you call it, but it's just beautiful. Whenever I achieve that, I know it's gonna be a good cup of coffee. Now I'm gonna steam my milk while we're here. Kinda looks like an apple on top, or a pumpkin. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. A baby in hand and a coffee in the other. That's usually how my day goes. Ah, oh, that is good. That's gonna give me energy to keep up with you, bub. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is gonna be more like a what I eat in a day slash day in a life. So I'm actually gonna put this kid down, finish this cup of coffee, and then we're gonna go check on the chickens, see if they have any eggs, and then we'll make our next dish. If you guys can guess what it is, let me know in the comment section below. Or maybe not, like, how would you know? Mommy, do you want this one? Yeah, thank you, Sissy. Thank you. So this is our everyday routine. We go up to see the chickens twice a day. I'm gonna try to do some fall planting soon. So it'll be good for her to kind of learn about plants just be outside with us good new learning for me too hi chickies you want to go in yeah these are chicken treats they eat bugs okay go ahead no eggs today no eggs. not right now usually they lay in the afternoon and sometimes we'll get like four so in the mornings i just come up to feed them see if they made it through the night because like there's coyotes around here i'm kind of joking but also kind of serious, but they should be okay. <laughs> All right, so let's go down and make some breakfast. More pumpkin-y stuff. Let's go make breakfast, CC. Okay, so as I showed you guys earlier, I got this pumpkin bread, pumpkin brioche from Trader Joe's, and I thought like this would be perfect for French toast. They say to use it for nut butters and spreads. So let me just see real quickly what it looks like. Ooh, it's like swirled in. You know, this would have been so perfect if they had like some cream cheese on top, but let me just taste how not too sweet. Mm. We are definitely making French toast with this. To amp up more of the pumpkin flavor, I'm gonna start with a quarter of a cup of pumpkin puree. I'm just gonna eyeball it. One, two, three, that looks about good. Two chicken eggs. Look, these are their eggs. They're so pretty with like these little speckles. Some pumpkin spice. I'll do half a teaspoon because it can be pretty intense. 
pinch of salt, some vanilla extract, and then with my whisk, I'm just gonna mix, mix, mix. I'm gonna add like mm, two teaspoons of maple syrup in here. I'm not adding too much because I don't want it to burn when we make the French toast, but I also want a little bit of sweetness in there. Plus this maple syrup is fire. It's so yummy with the cinnamon and vanilla. Just mix this up. Nice and pumpkin-y, yes. And now as I'm whisking, I'm gonna pour half a cup of milk in to thin it out. This is gonna be a nice and thick dip for our toast. And then if you notice, I'm putting it in like a shallow baking pan just because it's easier to dip the bread in. Okay, that is our French toast dip mixture. Let me get my cooktop and then we're gonna make our French toast. It's gonna come together so easily. Now for the maple syrup, I'm using this one that already has flavors, but if you guys wanted to add flavors to your, like extra flavor to your maple syrup, in my book, I have a French toast recipe here that I infuse a spiced syrup. So I have like cinnamon, cardamom, and orange zest, which would go really well with this. So if you guys haven't gotten my cookbook yet, be sure to check it out. I'll have a link in the description box below. All right, so we have our cooktop. Let me turn it on to medium low, not too hot. This burner gets insanely hot, so. I'm just gonna go actually low. Okay, once the pan gets hot, I'm going to add a pat of butter. I usually like to add a little bit of butter at a time. I have like another tablespoon right here. That way, as you keep going, it'll just settle. But I'm gonna show you guys two slices. This will make enough for at least six people. Like this should finish half of this loaf right here. So if you want more, just double it. Let the butter get nice and melted. Now I'll take my bread and dip it in really quickly on each side. Like you only need to submerge it for maybe like 20 seconds, but you do want it to soak through. And this bread is so yummy. It just, like brioche bread is so perfect for French toast because it acts like a sponge and it really just soaks through that. If you guys don't have brioche, you can always use like uh, French bread. That's a little bit thicker or you can use ciabatta even, it has like a nice crust, or just plain old Texas toast or like thick white bread. Let the excess come off. No, I'm keeping it on pretty low heat because there's sugar in here. I don't want it to like sizzle and burn. So this right here is perfect. Just let it kind of mellow out and do its thing. All right, I think this looks about good. Yes! Oh, that is a perfect crust right there. Mm -mm -mm. That doesn't scream fall coziness. I don't know what does. And just that like yellow orange hue from the pumpkins, it's gonna be good. So I'm just cooking this maybe three minutes on each side, depending how intense your burner is. Mine gets pretty hot, so I kind of have to manage it. But if you guys are doing it on like an electrical range or like a gas range that's a little more manageable. Um, I would say two minutes, two to three minutes would be good. Beautiful. All right, let's serve this. Cece, Rita. Cece, do you want some French toast? You wanna try this? Yeah. yeah. French toast. French toast, have you ever had French toast? Yes, French toast, pumpkin. Yeah, it's pumpkin French toast. Okay, what we're gonna do first is yeah. add some maple syrup. Just a little bit. Do you like raspberries? Yeah. Okay, try this with the raspberry. Is it yummy? Yeah. Tell daddy. Yummy. <laughs> mm. Mm. That crust right there from the pumpkin, that is so yummy. Mm. All right, we're gonna go move about our day. Yummy breakfast. What do you wanna do today? So it's lunchtime, and usually for lunch, I make everyone the same things that's fast and easy. I have a little bit of a mom hack. I'm gonna be making mac and cheese with pumpkin. Usually I do it with butternut squash, but I thought this is pretty interchangeable. Um, I found this pumpkin bisque at Trader Joe's and I thought it would be a really good base for the cheese. And then I'm also gonna add some extra pumpkin. So nice and yummy and creamy. Okay, let me turn this on. All right, we're gonna let this get nice and hot and then I'm gonna add one clove of minced garlic and just saute it until it's nice and fragrant. All right, the pan is nice and hot. 
So I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil and add one clove of minced garlic. I'll just saute it for about a minute until it's nice and golden brown. And then we'll add this pumpkin bisque. While that kind of gets golden brown, let me do a quick taste test. Mmm, it's kind of sour. There's apple cider vinegar in here that I feel like they went maybe too far with. There's already milk and there's heavy cream in here. Tahini, interesting, apple cider vinegar. It's good, it's gonna act as our base. I'm not gonna do um, flat, like a roux. I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna go straight with this. Maybe we'll just do one cup. Okay, that looks good. Give it a good mix. Yeah, this is gonna be such a great base for the mac and cheese. I'm gonna add a quarter of a cup of this pumpkin because like I said this morning, we're gonna amp up all the pumpkin flavors. Like it's already pumpkin, we're gonna make it even more pumpkin-y. And you know what? I actually like that this is a savory option for pumpkin because so many times you find pumpkin spice at the bakery or at the restaurant, at the stores, and I just like savory thing. I actually really love pumpkin soup and savory pumpkin bread pudding. That's kind of what I want to test next. But if you guys want to see that, let me know in the comment section below. And now we'll add our cheese. I have some grated sharp cheddar. This is such a great mom hack though, you guys. Like Aracy, she's starting to eat her veggies, which is not a problem, but Roly, because we let him just pick his food and eat it himself, he doesn't really like greens, so I try to sneak it in. Let it get nice and melty. Oh, I also added like a tablespoon of cream cheese because pumpkin and cream cheese just go together like peanut butter and jelly. I really like the combination of it together, whether sweet or savory. Okay, so the cheese has melted. So here I have already boiled off pasta noodles. I have elbow because they're really kid friendly. And um, I boiled off one cup, which now has expanded to about two cups, which is pretty much perfect. Yes. It looks very mac and cheesy. I'm gonna let this simmer for another minute for everything to thicken up and then we'll serve it. All right, so the sauce has thickened up nicely. It looks like mac and cheese and it smells pretty good. The kids also get a small portion, paired theirs with some broccoli from last night. It's pretty good. It's super cheesy. I can taste the cream cheesiness in it and now like the vinegar has mellowed out for sure. I'd make this again. Is it good? Yes. <gasps> All right, it's snack time. I'm gonna make us a little snack tray. It's easier for the kids to grab what they want when it's separated in like this cupcake pan like this. And I just leave it out so they can grab it so they don't have to bother me. Mom, I'm hungry. So I'm always gonna add some vegetables in there. I'm gonna add some cucumbers, just a few slices. I always add some type of berry. So I'm just gonna hold the strawberries and cut it in half. So for the apples, I like just cutting it really thin because if it's too thick, I found that they don't eat it. I'm not gonna make the dip just yet because I have pumpkin cranberry crisps. Very interested about these. So a piece comes like this. It looks like a mini toast <laughs> with some nuts and cranberries. Let's see what kind of nuts are in here. They have flaxseed, sunflower, pumpkin. Oh, pumpkin powder. Yeah, pretty good. Very crunchy. But my first reaction to this, honestly, was that it kind of reminds me of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. There's like a cinnamony taste in there that it's not bad. It's just what wasn't what I was expecting. And then we have these pumpkin spice cookies. They're shortbread cookies with pumpkin spice and yogurt coating. These are kind of soft. And I mean, it's not super hot in here because the AC is on, but the coating feels rather soft. The softness of the yogurt coating is definitely made up by the fact that the shortbread cookie is super crunchy. These are gonna go fast. I'm using Greek yogurt here just because I like the thickness of Greek yogurt. I've heard of yogurt cheese and that sounded really interesting to me. And then I'm gonna add a scoop of 
pumpkin. This is maybe about a tablespoon. I feel like pumpkin has like its own flavor. I'm not gonna make it any sweeter or any saltier. It can be used for the berries, the cucumbers, the apples, and the crackers. This needs no dipping because it's perfect the way it is. Snack is ready for them as soon as they wake up, but in the meantime, I'm gonna have my double pumpkin-y cracker. Cece, can you show mommy all your pumpkin family? She named all of her pumpkins. Who's this? Your mommy pumpkin. Who's this? Daddy pumpkin. Who's this? Grandma pumpkin. Cookie Who? That's Cousin Pumpkin and Mommy Cooking Cookie Pumpkin. Mommy's cut Mommy's gonna cook Cousin Pumpkin. So now we are gonna cook up the kabocha squash, which is more of a squash but with a pumpkin texture. And I still have a little bit of the pumpkin puree here, which will add into the curry for a little bit of creaminess. And I just gave it away. We are gonna be making spicy pumpkin curry. I think this has more of a Thai flair to it since it has galangal, coriander, lemongrass. So I'm really excited for this because pumpkin curry is one of my favorites to order at a Thai restaurant. So here I am going to turn the heat on to medium high and let it get hot. If you guys are wondering, this is the Our Place Always pan and it's great. Okay, so once this pan gets hot, I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil. So we're gonna actually start by sauteing the onions, get it nice and translucent, and then I'll add in our minced garlic and ginger. We're gonna add the onions, saute it for about a minute until it's translucent. Okay, this looks nice and golden brown, so now I'm gonna add some minced garlic, just two cloves. I like to add and layer in a lot of flavor before I put like the sauce in. Since that already has flavor, I just feel like I can amp it up a little more. Make it taste homemade, you know? So I'll saute this for a minute, just until you start smelling the ginger and the garlic. And now we add the chicken. Like a little bit over half a pound here of chicken thighs, just cut into small pieces. Sprinkle it with a little bit of salt. And then because I want the flavors of the kabocha squash to really soften up and seep through, I'm gonna add it while I stir fry the chicken. I'm gonna let this cook through for about five to seven minutes, and then I'll add our vegetables. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is deglaze the pan with a little bit of chicken broth. If you guys don't have broth, you can also use water. Let's just deglaze it so all the caramelized bits come off and just adds all that flavor. And now I'll add our vegetables. I'm gonna add, this is about a cup of broccoli, just the florets, and then some bell peppers. Usually I'm not a huge fan of bell peppers, but I feel like it's missing something if it doesn't. And now I'm gonna add our simmer sauce. As with all the other new pumpkin items, I'm gonna give this one a try first because I've never had it before, just so I know what to adjust. The theme of the day is to add pumpkin or make only pumpkin things. And I really wanted to challenge myself to amp up all the pumpkin-y dishes. So I'm gonna add a good serving of it. That was about a quarter of a cup. All right, so just give it a good mix. And then we just simmer this for probably not that long. I would say I'll simmer it for another 10 minutes and it should be good to go. So because this pumpkin curry has Thai flavors and essence to it, I actually am growing some Thai basil that I think would be pretty as a garnish or just to add into the curry. So let me show you. This one right here, I grew from one cutting, like one cutting right here. Look at the strand. It's gotten so thick and so healthy. These are also Thai basils right here, but they tend to flower quite a bit and their leaves are not as big. But this should be enough and it smells so good. It smells like pho. <gasps> Whoa, this looks so delicious. The kabocha squash looks nice and cooked through. The sauce thickened up like this. Wow. Does it look good? Yeah. You want to eat some rice and curry? Yeah. And cousin yeah. pumpkin? Yeah. All right, let's go. Add some Thai basil in there. Pop color and extra flavor really okay let's give it a try got the chicken get cousin pumpkin aka kabocha squash in here 
Mm. I probably could use another squeeze of lime to kind of bring out the flavors Cheers. a little bit. Cheers. Mm. Mm. The day is not done yet. I still have one last pumpkin thing to eat and this one I've been waiting for all day. But I'm gonna have to put them down for bed first. They're finally down and I've been waiting all day for this pumpkin pie ice cream sandwich. Like, doesn't that just sound good? I love ice cream sandwiches. I would probably take an ice cream sandwich over an ice cream cone. Well, let's give this one a try. I got this from Whole Foods. It's a limited edition one. I wanted to try it last year, but I kept forgetting and I just never had it. It's like a gingerbread crust. It's light. I was expecting like those dark ones, you know, like the chocolate ones with the white layer inside, except with pumpkin. I don't know why it didn't register, but this looks super delish. Maybe it's like a graham cracker crust. Mm. All right, so if you guys are thinking of making pumpkin pie or thinking, oh, it's too much work to make a pumpkin pie, get these ice cream sandwiches. They are so delicious. They taste exactly like a pumpkin pie, except ice cream. So you don't get that like mushiness of like the pumpkin. It's hit or miss for a lot of people. This one is perfectly creamy. It's not too sweet. The pumpkin spice is not overwhelming, super balanced. I would say that the cookie might be a tad sweet, but it doesn't detract from the overall flavor, which is pretty amazing. I ate all the pumpkin things today and I 100% did not regret it. I actually really love pumpkin. I'm probably more of a savory pumpkin person than I am a sweet pumpkin. Although this pumpkin pie ice cream sandwich is probably the best thing I ate today. And then in second place was the spicy um, pumpkin curry simmer sauce. That was delicious. And actually I take it back earlier, I said it wasn't that spicy, but the spiciness hits you at the end. Be aware of that if you can't handle a lot of spiciness. I didn't mind it too much though. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see me eat other things for a full day, let me know in the comments section below. This was really fun to film. Uh, give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.